जय हिंद टू ऑल दिस इज आकांक्षा शुक्ला फ्रॉम इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी डिपार्टमेंट टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट दी वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ सब्जेक्ट वेब टेक्नोलॉजी द कोड इज के आई टी फाइव जीरो वन एंड द टॉपिक इज एबस्ट्रैक्ट विंडो टूल किट एंड इवेंट हैंडलिंग नाउ मूव ऑन टू दी मेन स्पेसिफिक टॉपिक लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस समथिंग अबाउट दी जावा लैंग्वेज विच इज oops concept based language and the most uh, or most important or we can say that main characteristics of the java are polymorphisms inheritance abstraction and encapsulation and uh, one of the most important uh, property of java language is that the java language is platform independent language okay now move on to the uh, topic uh, that is awt so basically the full form of awt is abstract window toolkit and it is a kind of uh, api which it is a kind of api which is used to create the window based applications and also gui for java programs itself so uh, as we as i had told that java is a platform independent language but here it is mentioned that uh, java awt is a platform dependent api so why this is uh, why this awt is known as platform dependent api uh, let us discuss uh, this uh, first only so the components which we are going to make uh, inside the awt is so these components uh, when displayed on the screen so their display their uh, their look and feel can be varied as per the operating system changes means in simple words we can say that if you are going to make the api which is a window based api so if you are going to make that api in the windows operating system then it will be considered as a window api but when the operating system changes for example if you are going to view this api in the mac os then that application will converted into the mac application in mac operating system so as uh, as as go on when we are changing or when we are varying the operating system the look and feel of the awt components will changes from operating system to operating system only now why this happens because the awt calls the native platforms directly that's why they are the components uh, the components which we are using in the awts their look and feel will varied from operating system to operating system now various uh, components can be used in java awt these components are the tag boxes check boxes and the buttons and check box group list menus choices scroll bars so, so these are the components which we are going to uh, put or which we are going to enable inside the uh, applications windows based applications when we are going to construct the apis for the gui construction now nowadays uh, basically it is rarely used because of it uh, these two properties of or we can say that these two disadvantages first one is platform dependent and the second one is heavy weight heavy heavy weight nature so why uh, the awt is considered to be as a heavy weight nature because all the components uh, which we are going to use in a awt container these all components uh, totally uses the resources of the operating system so that's why it is considered to be as heavy weight nature for example here one of the example is also given that if you are initiating the text box in the awt that actually means that you are asking the operating system to create a text box for you that's why we can say that the awt is a heavy weight nature also the nature of uh, awt components are heavy weight now next move on to the next slide so here uh, this diagram represents the basically what are the components which we are going to use in the awt so the components are container button label check box choice scroll bars further container can be classified or can be further classified into two kinds first one is window second one is panel and that uh, window is further classified into the frame and the dialog boxes and panel is further classified into the applet only now what are the types of containers basically there are four kinds of containers first one is window second one is dialog third one is panel and the fourth one is frame these four kinds of containers have different different properties first one is window so this is a this a window container is an instance of a window class which is considered to be having no border and no title and no menu bar also in window container you can uh, you will not have any border or any menu bar or also not any title bar inside the window container 
Next one is dialogue container. In dialogue class, it has border and title and uh, the instance of the dialogue class cannot exist without the associated instance of the frame class. Means uh, I, I will show one of the examples or one of the program later on in which we can see we can see that whenever we are going to associate a frame class then if the instance of the dialogue class cannot exist without an associated instance of the frame class means if the frame class has not associated their instance class then you cannot be able to exist the dialogue class instance also next one is panel panel container the panel container does not contain the title bar menu bar or border means these three uh, uh, properties the panel container does not contain. It is a it is generally a generic container only which uh, which holds simply the components of the Java AWT. An instance of the panel class it provides the container to which to add the components. Me simply uh, the panel uh, container is an instance of the panel class only which provides only a container that helps uh, the user to add the components only in it. Nothing else. Next one is frame. The frame is the one of the most uh, popular container uh, which we which we, uh, we re, which we use generally in uh, making APIs or window based applications because it is it consists of title it uh, it has in it also title bar border and menu bar only and also it contains the several components just like buttons text fields scroll bars check boxes so that as I had already told that this is one of the most widely used container while we are developing the applications in the AWT only. Now this uh, there uh, we can see that what are the different sources of event through which we are going to uh, which we are going to initiate the buttons or uh, different different components of the AWT. So what are the different event sources which we are going to discuss here. First one is button, second one is checkbox, the next one is choice and uh, the list menu items, scroll bars, text components and window. So let us uh, discuss about these event sources first of all. So first, uh, first one is first event source is button. Uh, basically, the um, we can say that uh, whenever we are going to write a program regarding the generation or regarding the construction of uh, GUI based applications in uh, Java AWT, simply we can write the program only or when we are going to initiate or when we are going to inbuilt a certain kind of uh, events or when we are going to uh, inbuilt in a certain kinds of event handling in that particular component of Java AWT then this kind of uh, event handling or this kind of sources of event can be generated here only. Suppose if when we are if you are going to create a button there is a button if you are going to create a button so when we click on that button then what happened? When we click on that button, then what happened? That uh, register that first of all registers with the Java code only. Okay, it must be registered. It must must be registered with the Java code only. Then when we click on that button, that uh, code will be that uh, then uh, that uh, button will be uh, registered with the Java code. And as per that clicking, the Java code will send the respective response. So, for example, if you are going to fill a form and we are going to click on the submit button, then when we click on that submit button, after clicking on the submit button, that button will register with the Java code and that coding which we are which which was registered during the coding time with that button will initiate the response to that particular button means if you are going to click on the submit button then what happens all the details of the forms will get submitted and it will get feed into the database only so these how that uh, details will go to the databases that that uh, code will all will all be inserted inside the java codes only okay so it is a basically in a event handling what happens it is a kind of a delegation model which has two parts first one is the source object and the second one is event handler so let us discuss first part only first of all that is the sources of event so first source of event is button which generates the action events only when the button is pressed okay second one is checkbox these these all are the components of the Java AWT. What happens? What is the checkbox? The symbol of checkbox is this. 
which you all are familiar so for for example this is a check box name is male and the second one the check box the name is female so at a time only one check box will be clicked true only not both not both the check boxes okay okay sorry both the check boxes can be uh, clicked uh, at a time only but the options are wrong so what happened suppose there are i am asking you what are the favorite subjects of yours so you can you can have option maths also science also and computers also so a student can also select two subjects as his as his or her favorite subject only okay so check boxes basically allows the users to have more than one choices at a time but one is the radio button which can be selected the symbol of radio button is this which can be selected at a time once only means suppose in this example is correct here that if you are going to select the option male then you can't select the female also at the particular instance of time only so now what is the in the components of java awt this radio button is not available this is also one of the disadvantage of java awt that the radio buttons are not available in the components of java awt so the check boxes basically how the check boxes item how the check boxes can be considered as the sources of event that whenever the items item event generates when the check boxes is selected or deselected means whenever we select or when we whenever we mark the tick over the check box then the event occurs okay so whenever we click uh, tick on the check box then a event occur whenever we unchecked the check box then also a event occurs next one is choice it creates or it generates the item events when the choices are changed or when the when we are going to change the choices suppose uh, we are we have selected so many we have selected so many choices that maths also science also later on uh, we came to know that uh, now we have to deselect or we have to unchange that particular option so whenever the choices will change that item events occur or this particular can be considered as the event source here only now the next one is list it generates the events when an item is double clicked and it generates the item events when the item is selected or deselected also so whenever list is also a kind of combinations or it is a kind of collections of the various options in which we can just like when we are going to uh, when we are going to write a document over the ms word then we are going we are going to generate a list of all the subjects so list basically consist of uh, the uh, combinations of the details and whenever the whenever you are going to uh, clicked or whenever you are going to select that particular item or deselect the item from that particular list then also a event occur next one is menu item it generates the action events when a menu item is selected and also when a checkable menu item is selected or deselected here we have two options that when a menu item simply menu item is selected and whenever a checkable menu item is selected or deselected next one is scroll bar whenever we are going to adjust uh, the screen so whenever we are going to adjust the contents over the screen then this event occurs okay so whenever we are going to scroll the horizontal scroll bar or vertical scroll bar over the screen to view the text over that particular uh, screen so whenever we are going to perform this task then the adjustment event occurs and the source of the event is the scroll bar next one is text components whenever we are going to whenever we are going or whenever any other user wants to enter a character over the text boxes over the text fields then the text component then then uh, text events will occur and the source of the events are the text components only now the last one is a window with uh, when this uh, window event occurs when a window is activated deactivated closed deiconified and iconified opened or when we are going to quit that particular uh, we are going to quit from that particular window then these kinds of event uh, window event occurs uh, and the source of the event is window so basically these are the sources of the event when anything or whenever any clicked options or whenever any uh, unchecked options uh, selection deselection open close options are occurred or initiated then the event or event handling process will initiate only 
now here we can see that what are basically what are the components in the awt and their corresponding constructors basically i want to clarify all, uh, you all that what are the main components in awt so first component is label the second one is text field or you can say that text boxes or text field next one is text area check box as i had already told that radio button option is not available in awt so in spite of radio button here we have a option of check box group okay next one is button button then choice then list menu scroll bar so these are the some components which we are going to use in the awt as a component only and uh, these all uh, these all components are also having their constructor which when we are going to write a program then we use these constructors inside the program so first one is first component is button and uh, it has uh, two constructors first one is button and the second one is button string str second one is check boxes it has uh, so many constructors so as per requirement of your uh, program or as per requirement of the client or the user we can select any of the constructor which are mentioned here only the next one is choice list is it has uh, not uh, no, uh, no no not a single uh, specific constructor you can uh, use here only default constructor also the next component is the list it has three kinds of uh, constructor first one is simple uh, list constructor and the second one is uh, argument uh, argument also in this constructor there are arguments int num rows and the next one is int uh, integer num rows and with this argument there is also one option also the next one is which is a boolean multiple selector next component is text field it has also four um, kinds of constructor only as per the requirement you can select any of these constructor inside your program next basically what is the difference between text field and text area whenever we are going to write something inside this so this is a kind of uh, text field okay means uh, only if you have to write the name here so you put name here a b c d whatever the name is but uh, when uh, we are when uh, we are going to write the address okay so sometimes uh, address consists of multiple lines so to um, increase the size of the text field we have another option which is called a text area so text area basically uh, there is uh, no so much difference between text field and text area only the difference is uh, regarding the size okay so whenever we are going to write something uh, more than uh, something more th more than which can be put inside the text field then we generally use a text area component of the java awt so these uh, text area is also some of the constructor as per requirement we can use or we can initial initialize any of the constructor inside your program now here uh, there are some event listener interfaces basically when we are going to write a program or when we are going to make a window based applications or guis so what we have to keep in mind that uh, the whatever the components you are going to add inside your window based application and after adding the components which component can be considered as a source of event and how to handle that event it must be coded inside that particular applications or particular coding so you we have to keep in mind three things first one is components of awt second one is source of event source of event and the third one is event handling so basically when we, uh, basically the event handling can be event can be handled using the interfaces so we have so many event listener interfaces which we can directly used inside of which we are going which we are going to implement directly inside our program as uh, the Uh, packages of uh, these interface uh, of these interfaces already have in the java library so we have to directly implement 
these interfaces inside our program and put the code as per the requirement of the user. So, there are basically so many interfaces. First one is action listener, then the second one is adjustment listener, third one is component listener, then container listener, focus listener, key, key item listener, key listener, mouse listener, mouse motion listener, mouse wheel listener, listener text listener. So, these are the basically interfaces which are already in the Java uh, packages, in the Java IWT packages already inbuilt. So, as per the requirement, we have to initialize one of the interfaces inside our program. First action listener is, uh, um, it defines a method to receive the action events only. Basically, this action listener is used when we are going to, uh, when we are going to add the component just like uh, buttons, uh, buttons or menus. So, when we are going to add these kind of component, then action listener interface can be used. Next one is adjustment listener. It receives the or it defines the method which is capable to receive the adjustment events. Whenever we are going to adjust some events or when we are going to add, when we are going to add uh, something like uh, that components inside the Windows based application, which uh, can be adjusted from or suppose we are going to adjust the size of the component. So, whenever the adjustment can, whenever the adjustment of any component occurs inside the API, APIs or inside the application, then we can use this interface adjustment listener. Second, next one is component listener. Basically, it defines the four methods to recognize that whenever the component is hidden, whenever it is resized, whenever it should be shown or whenever it is moved only. Next is container listener. It defines only two methods to recognize when a component is added or whenever it is removed from the container. So, this uh, container listener can be used to only identify that whenever the component is added to the container or whenever it is removed from the container. Next, focus listener. Basically, here uh, most of the times uh, this word comes uh, that is the container. So, container is uh, nothing. It is a kind of, uh, uh, it is a kind of uh, a container only that contains the components in the Java IWT. Suppose this is a window and here we have text fields. Okay. And one button also, which is a click button. Okay. So, this, 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 this portion in which these components are, these components are uh, containing. So, that particular portion of uh, that particular thing can only be called as container which contains the components in Java WT. Okay. Next is item listener. So, it defines the method to recognize when the state of an item changes. So, Item listeners generally this interface is used whenever we are going to add the component just like text checkbox or checkbox group. So, here what happens when we are going to use the checkbox or checkbox group um, component, then we are, we, are go, we are always going to select or deselect that particular checkbox or that particular item. So, whenever the state of item changes, okay. Just like uh, in the previous uh, slide, I have given example that uh, if you are uh, if you are having so many subjects and I have to select some of these subjects as my favorite. So whenever we are, whenever I am going to select or deselect that particular item, so what happens? The state of that particular checkbox will change. So whenever this happens, then item listener interface will be used here, or this uh, state changed. Uh, uh, method will be called here only. Next one is key listener. So, key listener basically it has uh, some method just like key pressed, key released. Okay. So, it uh, it initiates the th three methods generally to recognize whenever the key is pressed, released or whenever we are going to type something with the help of keyboard. So, whenever these three things occur, then the interface or key listener will be initialized only. Mouse listener basically what happens when the mouse listener interface is called? It defines the four methods to recognize when the mouse is clicked, when the or when we are going to enter the component, exit the component and when it is pressed, when it is released. So, these are the some methods. Whenever these method occurs, then mouse listener interface will be called. Then mouse motion listener, it defines two methods to recognize when the mouse is dragged and dropped, moved. Means whenever the mouse, whenever we are going to drag the, or when we are going to uh, put the mouse click over something over the screen, then whenever we are going to, basically when we are going to use the mouse, when we are going to focus on the mouse motion, 
motions then these interface mouse motion listener will be used mouse wheel listener it defines only the only one method to recognize whenever the mouse wheel is moved okay next one is text listener it defines one method whenever the text value is change, changed then text listener interface will be called now in the previous slide what we have what we have seen that uh, the interfaces and their particular description only in the next slide what we are going to see that these are the interfaces and these are the methods corresponding to corresponding to that particular interface so whenever we are going to use the action listener interface then this method will be called okay the method is void action perform okay so what happened it this method will handle the particular event which is uh, occurred by any particular source just like i have discussed about the different sources of event so whatever the source of event was there but whenever the particular uh, particular interface will be called then that particular method will be used to overall uh, to fulfilling the overall requirement of that particular course next is adjustment listener so whenever we where we are we are going to use this interface then this particular method will be called so similarly the component listener when we are going to use the component listener then white component resized white component moved shown component hidden these all the methods will be used with these interfaces okay next one is basically uh, when we are going to design the apis we have uh, we, we are generally uh, going to use uh, three kinds of interfaces mostly or uh, these uh, three interfaces are action listener interface item listener interface and the key listener interface so when we are we are going to use the item listener interface uh, the item state change method will be called okay and when we are going to use the key listener interface then these three methods can be called void key pressed void key release and void key typed now the as i had already told that uh, there are so many components which we are going to use in the awt so first one is label and uh, here the exceptions whatever the exceptions uh, uh, label can throw so there are three kinds of exceptions or three different methods how the label method can be used to throw the exceptions only how the label can be used inside the awt now here this is a applet weaver and uh, there is a diagram it shows that there is a applet which consists of three labels 1 2 and 3 so how this is how this uh, output uh, can be shown here the basic code of this uh, of this output behind the um, behind the output the code is that only okay now the first line we can we can see that we are importing the java.awt.stick so the java.awt.stick is a awt or it is a kind of package in a java uh, which consists of all the classes that can be used inside the awt coding okay so whenever we are going to write the program for awt we have to import the package that is import java.awt.stick and also if you are going to construct the applet here and uh, so applet uh, i think it has uh, already discussed in the previous lectures that what is what is the applet basically in today class i am going to discuss about the awt and event handling only so you have to import the applet package also okay this is the applet code okay and uh, the main code for adding the labels in our screen is this so here what we are going to do we are going to declare a class the name of the class is label demo and this class is going to extend the applet class and that applet class will be consisting here only okay so now in with the use of init method we are going to declare three labels so first one is label the name of this label is one and uh, here we are going to use the label uh, class and the objects of this class and uh, the new label 
and here we provide the name of that particular labels whenever we are going to uh, create or when we are going to write any program in java awt you have to declare all the components first of all so here we are going to declare the component that is three labels with their names here and after that you have to write this code also if you have if you have not written this code so you your output will come this way blank output no labels no labels can be seen in over the screen just like in the previous example we can see that three labels one two three are visible over the screen but if you had not to write the program this this uh, lines of code if you have not written then the output will look like in this way blank output because you had not added these labels to the applet window so you have we have to uh, we have uh, a screen which doesn't show any thing over the screen so basically the concept is that whenever you are going to add the component over the applet window or any window then you have to first of all declare all the labels all the components and also pass the values of their components and later on you have to add that components to the applet window also then only the screen will be appear like this only here we can easily see that three labels one two and three are visible over the screen okay next one is layout managers each component each sorry each container object has a layout manager associated with it basically the layout manager is an instance of any class that implements the layout manager interfaces and it is set by the layout manager is set by the one of the method that is known as set layout method i will at the last at the end of the presentation i will define or i will explain one of the one uh, example or one program which consists of all these things okay means which consists of components also which consists of event handling concept also and also this concept layout manager okay so if you uh, if you are not called to set layout if no call to set layout is made then the default layout manager is used only okay if you had not used any layout or you have not called any layout manager then by default the by default layout manager is used okay so whenever the container is resized or sized for the first time the layout manager is used to positioning the each of the components which are con, con, which uh, that particular container consists of that okay and the set layout method has for the general form that wide set layout and the, here we can write the set layout object only okay basically the layout object is a reference to the desired layout manager so if you want to disable the layouts or uh, managers and position the components manually then pass null for layout object we uh, later on we see in the program that how we can pass the null for the layout object or how can we pass any value to the layout object so we will see later on only so if you are going to do this particular task then we will need to determine the shape of the position see shape and positions of each component also manually so how that particular task can be fulfilled by using the set bounds method defined by the component okay by using this method set bound we can initialize the boundaries of the particular component so here uh, the different uh, layout managers are basically why we use layout managers because they arrange the components in the particular sequence or in the particular manner through which the user or the client can view the window based applications or the apis in a more fantastic manner okay second one is it facilitates us to control the positionings and the sizes of the components also in the gui forms uh, just like if you are going to put the text box okay if you are going to if you are going to put the text box here okay and here is the label that is name okay and if you are not going uh, if you are not using any layouts or any layout managers then what happens that particular text box can be appear here only and that label can be appear here only also so this uh, the look uh, of this uh, particular uh, the particular window will be not as much as good okay and uh, also the user or the client can also not view this one as a good screen also okay so what happens so basically why we use the layout managers to arrange the components in the particular or in the sequential manner okay and uh, we have also in gui forms we can also um, use the layout managers to 
properly positioning the components here. Okay, these are the four layouts. Flow layout, border layout, grid layout and card layout. Uh, by default, if you are not going to initialize any of the layout manager, then by default flow layout will be used. So, these are the layout managers and these are the constructors respective to that uh, layout managers. And this is the diagram that how flow layout appears, how the border layout appears, how the grid layout appears and how the card layout appears. So, important methods for the layout manager, first one is set layout method and the second one is set bound method. Now, this is one of the example in which uh, the um, in which the all the components all the in which we are going to discuss about the component how to add the components and how to use the event handling also and how to use the layout manager. So, first of all when we are going to write the program you are going to import the necessary packages also. So, here two packages are imported first one is import java.awt.st and second one is because this program also handles the event. So, java.awt.event handling uh, event uh, also import here. Now, we had uh, declare or we had made a class which is known as checkbox example 2. Here, we are going to initialize the constructor. Okay, uh, as uh, we all know that the name of the constructor should be matches with the class name. Now, there are two methods to create the frame. First one is by using the inheritance or second one is by using the associations. So, here I am going to use the second one is second one method that is with the help of association method. So, with the, when we are going to use this method then we are creating the frame. So, frame class the object is f and here the frame name is checkbox example. Now, we create the label okay just as we already seen in the previous example that class name label then object, then label. here we can pass the value of the label also. Then we are going to set the alignment or the size of the label with the help of that particular object label. So, set alignment, alignment is set as center and set size, size will with the use of this method set size, we can set the size of any component of the AWT. Now, we are going to create the checkbox. So, first checkbox class and this is the object. Here the value of the checkbox is C++ and set bound method is used here. So, basically what happens with the when we use the set bound it basically it uh, it sets the boundaries ok. So, it sets the boundaries of that particular checkbox. So, we have to pass the values here only ok width or height and the second checkbox is checkbox 2 also the uh, we, uh, we use the set bound method and pass the values. The name of the second checkbox is Java. And uh, now what I had said that if you did not add the uh, these components to the window panel or to the frame panel to the dialog whatever the container you are using. So, you have to add these components to that container also. So, here we are going to add we are we have we had used three components two checkboxes and one label. So, you have to add these checkboxes to the frame also ok. So, this code adds the components to the class. Now, this code is used to add the event to the checkboxes. So, what I, what I had told that whenever we are going to use the checkboxes then which interface will be used item listener interface will be used because this uh, interface will be this interface has the method that is known as item state changed. So, whenever this interface will be called the whenever we are going to change the state of the events then that listener will be called only. So, we have two checkboxes. So, in both the checkboxes you had to add the item listener interface ok and inside that interface you have a item state changed method and inside this you have to set the text or whatever you want, whatever the code you want to write over that particular click event or over that particular checked unchecked options of that particular checkbox you have to write code here inside this method only the method is item state change here ok. So, you have to write the code inside this method only and uh, lastly what you have to uh, do you have to set the size and layout and visibility of the frame. So, framed the size uh, the size of the frame is 400 400 and the layout of the frame is set null. So, when we, whenever you uh, whenever as in the previous slide what I had told you that uh, 
pass null for layout object. If you want to disable the layout manager and positions the components manually, so you have to pass the null for layout object. So in the given example, they had passed the null value only and set visible. If you want to display the visibility of that particular frame, then you have to set the value of visibility true. Otherwise, you can put here false also. This is the main method in which we had called the checkbox example 2 only. So, what uh, in the output we can see that the checkbox button 2 is by default checked. Okay, because in the main method I had called that checkbox option only. Okay, so this is one of the program which consists of uh, all the components and how the event uh, handling can be occurred and how you can set the sizes, set the layout or the visibility of the frame. So, these things are covered in this example. Okay, that's all. Thank you.